Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss common misconceptions about anger and how they affect your psychology. We had a listener, a viewer, send me a video where somebody is talking about anger and how to never be angry again. The title of the video is How to Never Be Angry Again. And this video is interesting because there are a lot of really powerful truths in this video. I'll probably link it in the description, but there are some misconceptions in here that if you carry these misconceptions, they're natural conclusions. I mean, I don't want to mince words here, and I hope so, not exaggerating it, but it will ruin your life. These misconceptions, when carried to their logical conclusion, will ruin your life. And, you know, when it comes to you know, on some miscellaneous issue in your life, it's fine. You don't have to be 100% correct. You can just be generally correct and you're going to be fine. But on fundamental issues of your life, whether it's your psychology, whether it's whatever philosophical principles that you hold dear, your values, if you're writing a business plan, the structure of your business, you know, those fundamental issues, if you don't get those exactly right, you know, that will compound to huge errors. It doesn't seem like a big error, but it will compound to a huge error, maybe five years in the future, maybe 10 years in the future. You won't notice it. And then somebody makes a YouTube video about how you really got to be exact about running a business plan and you're three years in your business and you think, well, I'm making plenty of money. What's he talking about? Um, so these fundamental issues matter, right? It's the difference between dangerous and pernicious. There's something a lot better about something uh, simply being dangerous. It's like you, if you know it's dangerous, then it's fine. Like it's, it's clear what it is, but if it's pernicious, it's subtly dangerous and the true danger of it won't make itself known until much later when it, maybe it's so late you can't do anything about it. So what are these misconceptions about anger, the, these subtle distinctions that we really need to get clear on so we can go on and live the life that we want to live make the decisions that we want to make. Well, one error that this guy makes, and it's not just this guy, by the way. He seems like a, a mostly good guy and he seems like he has some good things to say. This isn't just this guy talking about psychology. It's psychologists. It's cognitive behavioral therapists. It's really the hegemony that is controlling therapy now. If you go to therapy, you know, if you get your insurance-sponsored therapy, they're gonna make these same errors as well. So that's, that's why I think this, this is really important to clear this up. So the first error that is made, the first misconception is conflating anger with uncontrollable anger. Right? So, so he talks about anger and then immediately relates that with uncontrollable anger, which wouldn't be that bad, right? We can kind of tell the difference between getting angry and uncontrollable anger, except Maybe you do get angry in a healthy way and you've already associated, right? you've already conflated it, linked it up in your mind to uncontrollable anger. And even though you're experiencing the healthy kind of anger that allows you to get your needs met, you're gonna conflate that with, oh, this is bad, this is uncontrollable. It must necessarily be uncontrollable because it's anger. You make that conflation in your mind, you do it pre-consciously, and then you shut down the anger. And then you'll never use it for what it's useful for. We'll get to it. Another misconception is conflating, another conflation is conflating anger with resentment. Again, this guy would go back and forth in this video and I've seen tenured psychology professors do the same thing. So it's nothing specifically against this guy, but linking anger with resentment. These are two different expressions of anger. I, I, I use anger as a healthy expression of what that emotion is and resentment is in a sense anger that we hold on to we do nothing with. Well, yes, that will be destructive. That will definitely be destructive because you're not using anger for what I would argue its proper purpose. Another misconception is having no anger, the healthy state of not being angry to equate this with acceptance. This guy's main point is, hey, you got to accept reality for what it is. And while I think that's true, it's not black and white. You know, acceptance isn't binary. Either you're accepting of reality or you're not. Yeah, there's definitely some things you cannot control, but there's some gray area in there, isn't there? There's some things that maybe you can't control given your present state of awareness, but the better you get at managing your anger, the more you will be able to control those things. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's really my point. I thought I, I thought I had something else about that. I don't have anything, another point to make about that misconception, but there's other misconceptions here. This guy flat out says, that anger is a useless emotion. 
that's a quotation from the video, it is in fact the most useful emotion. And it could be argued based on what I perceive to be you know, fundamental unconscious loops that we all go through that lead to neuroses, perhaps psychosis, depending on the extent of the loop, how long we've been going through it. It may be the only useful emotion. It is there to rev up our bodies so we can take action in this world and get our freaking needs met and get any injustice we see happen. We can get that rectified. That is what anger does. I mean, how many times do I see it? Guys who have a difficult time with anger, what do you usually find? They're usually hooked on coffee. They're hooked on energy drinks. They're, they're hooked on modafinil, Adderall. Not that you don't, can't take these things, by the way, but you know, if you needed uh, these things to, to take action, that, that is a sign to me that says, no, you, you have an endogenous chemical that acts in the same way that you know, any sort of stimulant would to your body it, or affects your body in the same way. And that's anger. That's what anger is. It's increased dopamine, it's increased adrenaline, it allows you to focus, it helps you to get your needs met. And in fact, you know, like we were talking about in the um, uh, the podcast this past week, it is in, in fact the endogenous hormone, in a sense, that you need to, uh, to push you over into the next stage, to initiate you into the next stage of your adult development. You will need anger to do that. I think I had a fairly popular article in my blog. It's still up, I think, The Wrath of Winter. Go, go check that out. It's all about, look, you're going to have these anxiety issues. You're going to have these shame issues. But what you're going to need to push yourself through them is, yeah, manage those, right? And we have ways to do that here, animusempire.com slash schedule. Manage those. But at a certain point, you got to get in touch with the anger because that's going to push you right through, right? Because you can't really feel anger and anxiety at the same time. So anger is useless emotion. I mean, that is just... Unbel- I mean, that's not perma- that's just damaging. Um, this guy makes a good point. He says, anger is, an, in a sense, a response to an unmet expectation. That's true. I mean, I, I would say a little bit differently. I would say it's an unmet need, some injustice that needs to be rectified. So what's his answer to this? Well, let's get those expectations met? No, his answer is the typical stoic CBT answer of, well, just don't have expectations. I just don't have expectations. And he does make the the uh, distinction between standards and expectation. A standard is an expectation you have for yourself. An expectation is a standard you have for somebody else or somebody else outside of you. But again, it goes back to the acceptance thing. What is really in, con- in your control? What isn't? I would argue that, of course, not everything is in control. And I think acceptance of reality for how it is on a certain level can be really healthy. But don't make yourself... a Uh, feel acceptance. Engage with reality. Manage your anger. And I would say that the better you get at managing your anger, the more you're going to be able to distinguish really what's in in your control, what isn't. I think you're probably going to be, the the better you get at managing emotions, specifically anger, you're going to see that really more is probably in control than you previously thought possible. And he's like, well, yeah, just have no expectations because it's easier to have no expectations. Of course, this is 100% true. It's easier to have more expect- than to have no expectations, but is that going to get you the life that you want? I would argue no. Of course, a lot of things, when it comes to psychology, a lot of things seem like the right thing because it's easier, because it makes you feel better short term. Making a freaking gratitude list. That's easy, and that makes you feel good. Is that what you need? Maybe, you know, and I want you to be grateful, but as a result of engaging with your emotions in a proper way. You know, I just got into some kind of argument with somebody. It wasn't really an argument, but we were talking about panic attacks. And what do you do if somebody's having a panic attack? And my point, I think I've talked about this in several videos, is, you know, the most most you can really do, if somebody you know is having a panic attack, or, you know, I've been in groups when this is happening, and the most, don't touch them, don't touch the person, don't hug them, but just breathe with them. You know, do the two breaths or two seconds in, hold for two seconds, out for two seconds, hold for two seconds in. You know, there's a bunch of different kinds of breathing techniques that you can use for, I I think it's just about paying attention to the breath. You know, that that can really help you get through it. But don't hug somebody, don't touch somebody, don't say, oh, it's going to be okay. And this person said to me, well, I was having a panic attack one time and somebody gave me a hug and I felt better. And my point is, yeah, (laughs) exactly, you felt better. You're supposed to do that regulation on your own. You have a prefrontal cortex now, a six-month-old, they need a hug. 
When they're crying, they need a hug. 26 year old, 36 year old, that inhibits your uh, the regulation that your brain needs to do. And if just t- t- convincing yourself you don't have expectations, you do, by the way. There's no way you don't have expectations. If, if you really don't have expectations, you are depressed and you really need to work on that. You have expectations, they're healthy. Do not convince yourself that they don't exist just because it makes it easier. Yeah, it makes it easier. That's the problem. Oh, look, if I only put 200 pounds on the bench press instead of 300, it's easier. So it must be better. No. (laughs) You can do 300. Stick with that. You're going to become stronger. It's going to be better for your health. And then, of course, where does this philosophy of cognitive behavioral therapy, um, rational motive behavioral therapy, all based on stoicism, where does this lead? By the end of the video, this guy says... Hey, enjoy the show. Life isn't that serious. You're going to die in the end anyway. Okay, well, if that's how you think, then I'll I'll link to this guy's video. I I want you to watch this guy. You know, I I want you to watch guys like this and, you know, get whatever information you can. But if you do happen to think life is serious, if your values do matter, if you do want to fight for your values, if you do want to perhaps make the quote mistake of thinking something is in your control, it turns out it isn't. And the only way you can realize that is to communicate anger in the best way you can. And it's frustrating, but this is what engagement, this is what a proper engagement with reality entails. If you think your life matters, then I would argue that you got to learn how to manage your emotions. Emotions are are tools for, op- they're tools for getting your needs met, but specifically anger and avoiding threats for anxiety, but also their modes of operation. They're they're kind of states that you need to recognize and accept so you can use. You can use the energy that they provide. If you're interested in that, then that's what we do here. You know, I, I don't want you to never be angry again. I want you to be angry all the time. I want you to train your neurology so you are, in effect, angry all the time. Nobody would ever call you an angry person, but you are, in effect, angry all the time because you can just constantly keep that simmer to get your needs met, to communicate when you want, to connect when you need to. And maybe you fail. That's okay, right? It's just more information, more uh, refined distinction of where you end and where reality outside of you, where reality that that you can't control ends, right? That's your boundary. That's what we work on here. Again, animusempire.com slash schedule. Thank you guys. I will leave it there. And yeah, you will die. You will definitely die. But before that happens, let's learn how your psychology works. So perhaps you can also live.